Hello and welcome back to the Channel of Nonsense and we're back in KTM land with this the 2021 890 Adventure this is a £10,999 adventure bike for 900cc engine 105 horsepower and this one has the £800 optional tech pack so quick shifter cruise control those bits and bobs so really it's a £10,000 no £11,800 bike if you want to get one with knobblies and off-road suspension there is the 890 Adventure R which is a thousand pounds more and that's kind of got high quality longer travel suspension uh, knobbly tyres and a few other bits to make it better at off-roading but this is the road bias version so let's see what it's like <laughs> it is a peppy little thing so it's got an 890cc parallel twin and it's just got power in all the right places for road riding to be honest it is i think peppy is the word you often think the parallel twins are going to be lethargic slightly efficient and dull things but as ktm and a few other people are doing playing around with firing intervals things like that you can make them feel a lot more v twin like and this falls into that category now obviously this isn't KTM's range topping adventure bike, that's the 1290 Super Adventure which I reviewed a couple of months ago. So things are a little bit different and I'll do a full walk around of this bike in a couple of minutes to point out all the bits and bobs. But you've got like a smaller screen, uh, dash screen that is, you've got a non-adjustable actual screen. It's adjustable if you've got Allen keys but it's not adjustable on the fly. And obviously you've got more basic suspension and bits like that. Now, you're probably going to be looking at this bike if you are thinking of going touring whenever the global pandemic allows us to do some touring. I know in the UK you can still do some, you go up to Scotland or whatever, and uh, tickle some kilts and have black pudding. But it has got 20 litre tank, it's got the saddle tank design which the 1290 Super Adventure borrowed. So the weight is all down low, and my initial impressions are it is slower steering than the 1290. I think it's fair to say the chassis geometry is a bit more relaxed, which is fine. It still handles absolutely fine, flawlessly even. Oh, this road is still closed. It's been three months since I last came down here. But yeah, it's, ooh, yeah. it's still got like that KTM fire in its belly. The way it bangs into the rev limiter slightly earlier than you think, but then you quick shift up and it just goes again harder than ever. But yeah, it is giving me loads of confidence. <laughs> and I've only been riding it five minutes, so it's definitely not a bike to be intimidated by. And actually, although it's an adventure bike, the seat height isn't massive. Blimey, I'm impressed by the amount of torque this has got the number is in my head somewhere it's 100 newton meters 100 newton meters of torque although this isn't an all single dancing techno whiz kid it has got a six axis imu for cornering abs traction control bits and bobs like that and you can adjust in rally mode the amount of traction control intervention you're getting so if you're in the dirt you can whack the traction control up to get up steep hills if you need to need a bit of electrical help or you can turn it down if you want to impress your friends you can kind of set up how you want now the front forks i'm just going to check yeah the front forks are non-adjustable certainly not the top i think the shock is adjustable for uh, preload this mirror is doing the foldy inny thing i think it just needs a bit of tightening up I think of all the human endeavours, all the effort we're putting into, you know, curing cancer, stopping a pandemic, it would be nice if someone could find a mirror mechanism for motorbikes that stops them wiggling around in the wind. Anyway, I know some people have done it. Now, I've been riding this bike for a little bit already at motor race speeds to get to these twisty roads, and it has got a slight problem. I'm six foot three and I'm getting quite a lot of wind noise off the screen and I didn't bring my Allen keys or my hex keys if you're of that persuasion so I can't adjust it which is a little bit of a pity because um, it is quite noisy I'd like to move it slightly but yeah it's not an adventure bike that's only for tall people as I've just said seat height really low I can touch the feet <laughs> on the ground while going along because that's sensible and um, yeah, it feels narrower between my legs than the 1290, I guess there's less fuel tank, less engine, less everything. The brakes are perfectly decent. 
I've actually uh, think they've got plenty of bite. I've read some people saying they lack a bit, but I mean, they seem to be doing the job for me. Quick shifter, however, which is an option part of the tech pack, or you can have it separately for a couple of hundred quid, is um <laughs> has got a little bit of a delay. So it's not as smooth as the one on the 1290s. Uh, it's a little bit clunky, but it's still fine up and down the box. It's just a little bit of a delay. The shift lever, however, does need moving because I'm having to take my foot off the peg to get it. It's a bit too high, but I'm sure you can adjust that. We're in a town. Around town manners are, well, let's, let's, let's just go without the clutch. I'm doing eight miles an hour without the clutch, just in first gear. That's pretty good, isn't it? Let's go smooth. There's none of the clankiness that you can get from the bigger twins. That parallel twin really helps when it comes to doing town riding and slow speed stuff without shuddering your teeth out into your breakfast or something. <laughs> Makes quite a nice noise as well for a parallel twin. The exhaust note is quiet as you would expect from a modern motorcycle. It doesn't really make much noise out of its bottom hole. But you get some induction noise. Whoa, it feels really good on the lent over. <laughs> Admittedly, it's probably going a bit slowly then. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly got enough go, like enough go to lift the front off a little crest there and it just comes alive in your hand. It's not as anodyne as some of its rivals. Well, yeah, you're not going to get on this and think, I need loads more power because you just don't. It is quick. It is quick. <laughs> but it's kind of just the shove and the instant shunt from that parallel twin that just uh, kind of kicks in at four and a half RPM and just goes. <laughs> oh, there are horses. Let's be quiet. I kill the engine. and start the engine. One thing I would say about this bike really is that it does feel like a proper grown-up KTM through and through. So don't look at this and think, oh, it's not going to give me quite the same thrill as the big 1290s. Actually, do you know what it kind of does? Because that engine's got, I don't know, it's just got quite an angry characteristic about it, but it blends into the background when you want it to. But when you shift down into second, and give it a handful of the goo tube, I'm sorry. Um, it responds really keenly. And actually the way it kind of flows with the road means you can ride it pretty damn quickly with a smile on your face. So yeah, don't discount it in the engine department whatsoever. Right, I'm gonna pull over, give you a walk around and show you various bits and bobs on the 890 Adventure. So yes, there is an R version meant for off-roading, but you know, a KTM adventure bike you would expect to be able to handle a green lane regardless and this feels fine standing up on this feels quite natural uh, there's a bit of a drop to the bars for my arms but I'm quite a long person and I'm not going to go very fast because I've not got knobblies on but yeah I mean it can handle lumps and bumps and give you enough confidence to tackle a dirty track like this um, I'm just going to stop and do a walk around for you uh, I just wanted somewhere scenic, so I went off-road. Right, let's uh, not get it stuck in some mud. Time for the bit in the video where I give you a quick walk around of the KTM 890 Adventure. Let's get cracking. Spinny roundy gimbal, please. No, that's me again. I don't want me. I want the motorbike. Here it is then in all its slightly insecty glory. It's got a smaller face than the one on the 1290 Super Adventure, but you can still tell it's a KTM. It's just when you look at it from the side, it kind of protrudes slightly. Anyway, you've got KTM branded front brakes and non-adjustable WP Apex forks. You've also got a preload adjustable WP shock around here, which does have a very handy remote preload adjuster. So if you're taking a pillion or luggage, you can crank that up a bit to firm up the rear. What else do we need to talk about? The saddle tanks. Now KTM's doing this with its adventure bikes. It's sticking the fuel tanks to the side and down low to help agility. And that's a 20 liter tank split. I think it's probably three chambers. Uh, I think I need to check. I'm not gonna check. I think it's three chambers, one in the middle and two down at each side. 
Here's the screen, which isn't adjustable on the move. I think you can by unbolting something somewhere, move it up and down, but it needs to be done at a standstill. It's got kind of slightly last gen KTM switch gear. But you know, it's a cheaper bike than the 1290s, so I'm sure that stuff will trickle down at some point. Also, you've got bar muffs, a seat, which I haven't had any comfort problems with. I've been riding for about an hour and a half and it's been fine, but obviously there's a range of accessory ones. Now, the engine, let's talk about the engine. Yep, the engine is basically a 900cc parallel twin with 105 horsepower at 8,000 RPM and 100 Newton meters of torque at 6,600 RPM. And as I've said on the road ride, it's certainly pokey enough to um, keep up with your mates pretty much whatever they're riding as long as you're decent in the corners and this bike does handle really well so you shouldn't have a problem high mount exhaust i think it's a bit prettier than the one on the 1290 super adventure double-sided swing arm again ktm branded rear brake and this has got avon avs4 tires on it um obviously you've got the adventure r it comes i think on mitas nobilies i know mitas mitas is a brand that not many people have heard of but ktm puts its 1290 super adventure on that as well and it's a bloody good tire right let's look at the dash it starts with this thing here that you turn around and can't lose because it's got its own home so no keyless on this which is great Right, hopefully you can see that's a bit reflecty. Sorry, I'm outside. And you just use these little buttons here to go through the menus, which is dead simple. There's ride mode, and then you've got street, rain, off-road, and rally. Rally mode lets you, I've got to deactivate the kill switch. Rally mode lets you separate the traction control from the throttle response. So you can have the throttle response, street, rally, off-road, whatever you want, with lowered traction control and everything else so you can have aggressive throttle response and no traction control if you're an off-road genius and you've got my ride which is the app thing so you can do turn by turn navigation you've got your trips it's all pretty simple stuff and this is where you go to turn traction control off if you want to do dank wheelies this bike's got the optional quick shift up and down which you can disable in there it's all fairly straightforward that's really reflecting you probably can't see it before we get back on the road just want to talk about build quality for a second because i know some people obviously presume it is a four grand cheaper bike than the 1290 and it does feel a little bit cheaper in places but nowhere near as much as you might think there's just little things like the screen adjustment and the non-adjustable suspension and the smaller dash other than that it feels perfectly well put together chunky solid and like most ktms it will go on for years i've not had any electronics problems oh this little thing for gps mount there so you can take that off and fit your gps there and i forgot to say there's a 12 volt socket right there which is quite handy especially if you're running a tank bag and you want to stick your phone on charge because instagram is life anyway i'm going to get back on the road and do my conclusion i'll see you then ah what a lovely day to be in the countryside on a motorbike it's so pretty around here it's lovely There we go, I think we've proven you don't need the R version if all you do is some very mild wobbly green laning. But it's it's probably a good idea to get the R if you actually want to go properly off-road. He says crashing into a horse. Oh, this gate is shut. Surely I can, can I get through there? Uh mm, might be able to get through there. Should we do it? Let's do it on video. Nice, nailed it. So there you have it, a quick review of the KTM 890 Adventure. I've been quite surprised by this because, despite being a more affordable bike than most of the kind of big KTMs, it still has that KTM playful side. And I certainly don't have any fears about the engine. It is really quite good for a parallel twin. It's got an intoxicating punch when you're above four and a half thousand RPM. Yeah, you'll be able to keep up with pretty much anything on this. And the chassis, despite having some fairly low-cost components, well, non-adjustable, shall we say, components, is actually really good. And you can find yourself riding it around corners with much more confidence than you might imagine, given a 19-inch front wheel. And yes, all of that kind of fundamental chassis stuff is still backed up by electronics to look after you. So all the six-axis IMU stuff. And that all kind of works seamlessly and it's easy to use the menus 
the dash might be a bit smaller than on the bigger models, but I mean, how big do you need your dash to be? Sorry, we're getting a bit floppy here. It can't handle my power. Now, obviously, 10999 is just the base price for this. You're going to want to add things like the quick shifter. You probably want to add cruise control, uh, which isn't radar cruise. It's just normal cruise, but that's fine for most people. Heated grips and uh, some of the rider modes for off-roady stuff. And then by the time you've done that, you're kind of closer to 12 grand. And obviously, a grand more if you're looking at the R model. But I still think at that price, it's probably coming out roughly the same price as a Triumph Tiger 900. And yeah, it's a, it's a tough one because that's got a bit more character to its engine now as well. But this has, for me, got a slightly naughtier feel, which I quite like. And obviously, it's still an unintimidating bike and it's approachable and it's good at everything from a little bit of green laning like I've just done to bimbling to thrashing on country roads so it is kind of a doable bike much like its bigger brother the 1290 Super Adventure S and it just feels like part of the family and a really good one it's not like that awkward uncle that comes around at Christmas and buys you um, like dodgy top shelf magazines and then reads them with you it's not like that but anyway that's enough waffle thank you so much for watching uh, please like this video if you've liked it and if you like this sort of content do consider subscribing because I do lots of these sort of quick motorbike reviews trying to be as honest as it can be which is as honest as I want to be which is very honest and uh, call me something nice in the comments uh, or just tell me that you bought one of these and you really like it I want to hear from owners see if it's been easy to live with or if you've had any problems anyway I've managed to waffle in my outro that's good isn't it thank you so much for watching goodbye